Good morning. Do you believe there is someone who traveled through time and space to find you, to love you with unfading love? There have been millions of years since the universe began. Human civilization rose and fell. One generation was born, and another generation died. In this long river of life, God has never stopped His unrequited love. He has loved us for millions of years. He loves us to this today, to this day. His love is never a penny less than millions of years ago. He loves sincerely, unreservedly, and fervently. In Genesis 3, we read that Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the tree of good and evil. God punished them with justly. He kept them out of the Garden of Eden the home which they prepared for his insignificant people. From then on, humans were no longer able to see God's face. For God, the pain of separation was not less than the pain when Jesus was on the cross. We think that Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the tree of good and evil that caused the beginning of human fallenness, the beginning of sin. However, there's also the beginning of God's heartache. The fall was also the beginning of the void in human hearts. Since then, God has run into us. He started to run into us. More than a man trying to find his ex-girlfriend back after breaking up. He wants her to be back. But the separation between them is spiritually alive and dead. Humans' original sin has made them long in darkness. And by themselves, they cannot go to God. Whoever comes too close, then death follow after, because God is holy. Darkness cannot sit together with the light. But God, who has a heart broken, did not disappear, nor did he sit on the ground and did nothing but weep and groan. He had a plan and put it in action. He chose a man, Abraham. Out of him, God made a people, the Israelites, and called them into the wilderness out of Egypt, and said unto them, I will be your God, and you will be my people. God is a great and noble God, but with a lot of gentleness, and patience. He tells the Israelites over and over again, who am I and who am I to you? From then, they were no longer ignorant of God. On the Mount Sinai in the wilderness, God commanded Moses to build a tabernacle. And the tabernacle was among these people. And so he was with them. In this way, he can live with his people closer. The laws of God, such as sin offering, trespass offerings, choosing the Levites to be priests, all God did is so that they could be cleaned and have a reconciliation with God. 
All God did was trying to be close to his insignificant people. Just like the man was telling his ex-girlfriend, I love you, I want to be with you all the time. About 500 years later, David was anointed to be a king. When King David finished his life of hiding and running, he dwelt in a fancy palace. And, and David thought unto himself, the God who him loved and loved him had not a decent habitation. King David's heart ached, and he wanted to build a magnificent temple for God. King David was considerate. But God is the creator of heaven and earth, and how can God have no place to dwell? How would he want to stay in a small stone house? Even though this little stone house is made of cedar, sandalwood, olive, pine, and pure gold, God created it. Will he lack of this? He doesn't. But he still happily moved into the little stone house that King Solomon built for him. It seems like he was happy that he could live among the significant peop insignificant people he loved. Yes, he is God, all-powerful. He doesn't need anything, but he is also the Lord who goes disappointed day and night over his lost love. He looked at the generation on earth and thought to himself, look at me, I'm right here. Do you see me? I don't just want to be your God mm. who helps you win the battles the one who grants you good harvest throughout four seasons, or the one who guarantees you peace for generation. I love you, and what about you? Do you love me? Are you willing to love me alone? But later, the Israelites did not worship to God alone. And afterward, their kingdom was divided and their people were scattered. They were taken prisoner by other countries for their broke God's hearts. And the scattered Israelites grieved for its destruction. And generations longed to rebuild it. But God no longer lived among them as it was destroyed. But God is faithful and ever loving. How can this heartbreak and disappointment will let him give up on everything? Since he loves, he loves to end. Many generations after King David, God sent his son, the one and only son, Jesus, into the world. Jesus was born into the flesh, living among the people. He ate and slept with people, and at that time, he no longer lived in a little stone house. He became flesh and blood among the people. Like every ordinary man, he was tempted by Satan. He felt hunger. He wept over Lazarus' death. However, however, 
However, wherever he went, he healed and drove out demons. He couldn't stand watching people suffering. He couldn't stand watching people feeling despair. He couldn't stand watching people being pushed out. He always stopped for broken people and asked, What do you want? Every time he was healing people, just like he was saying, I see you. Does it hurt? I know. I know. Come. Let me heal you. He did this to many because he had compassion. He loved. He was beaten. He was mocked. And he was rejected for us. Jesus knew his mission before he became flesh. Jesus could have fled in the Garden of Gethsemane because he's the Son of God. All he had to say was a word, a raise of his hands, or maybe doing nothing. And he could have killed the soldiers who came after him, but he didn't. The noble king, the Son of God, was like a lamb to be slaughtered. He was bind, bound by little men with dual swords and weak ropes. No, it doesn't make sense. No, he's the son of God. How could this happen? Why did Jesus let people humiliate him? When Jesus closed his eyes and remembered the past in the Garden of Gethsemane, he saw the scene of him living with his God Father and loving each other before heaven and earth were created. As the second person of Trinity, Jesus remembered that when God was creating heaven and earth, he was by God Father's side. Jesus remembered the God Father's heart, eight, as he watched Adam and Eve ate the fruit of tree of good and evil and drove them away. Jesus' heart ached together with God the Father. Jesus witnessed the endless love and patience God the Father has shown to people, despite the corruption of generations. He witnessed God the Father talking to Moses on the Mount Sinai. He witnessed the establishment of the tabernacle. He witnessed the construction of the holy temple built by Solomon. And he witnessed the joy of God the Father while he was living with his people. And after that, God the Father's heart broke again because his people weren't fixing their eyes on him alone. God is spirit, but his heart is also in the river of time. Wounded by generations, full of holes and scars. However, he never emphasized how hurt he was. He didn't cast us away. He never let us pay for his pain. Even though even when he emphasized how great his forbearance and pain were. His love also never diminishes or dies. He only asks people over and over again, do you love me?
Jesus knew God's heart. Therefore, even though he knew that he was going to die, he obeyed. Jesus said in tears of blood, Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup of suffering away from me, but let what you want be done, not what I want. Just like he was saying to Father, I love you, therefore, I love those whom you love as much as I love you. Three days later, after Jesus died, he rose again, and after 40 days, he rose to heaven. He left so that Holy Spirit, an advocate to help us and be with us forever. Since then, God dwelt no more in the tabernacle, no more in a little stone house, but in us. And finally, he became closer to us. And from now on, he will be with us. We have become the temple of God. And finally, the broken-hearted man found his lover back. Finally, God is dull in us. And this is also God's answer to my prayer. Last year, December, I booked a ticket to visit my family in Jordan. I haven't seen them for four years, and I supposed to be happy, but I had a mixed feeling. I said to God, Lord, I know, I know where my family is. If I book a ticket, I fly there. I know I will see them. But where should I go to see you? I, I don't know. Where should I go? I said to Lord, I wanted to respond to your love by loving you and loving my neighbor. Though I tried my best, I failed. Lord, I've been seeking you, but I couldn't find you. I've been reading your word, but I don't understand anymore. I have knowledge about you, but that doesn't touch my heart anymore. I tried my best to love you, but I'm exhausted. I feel like it's only me running towards you. What about you? Just like I'm waving to God, Lord, I'm here! Do you see me? Do you hear me? But now I know he's running toward me. I know I don't need to try harder. I know I don't have to shout louder to let him see me. His spirit is living in me. So I don't need to travel to anywhere to look for him. He lives in me, and I am the temple of God. 
Thus, this story sounds like unrequited love, and the main character is God. What if I tell you it is a two-way love story? Do you believe it? From that day, Adam and Eve ate the fruit of tree of good and evil. From that day, Adam and Eve were driven out of the Garden of Eden. There was a huge void in our hearts, so we started to looking for God and running toward God, even if the process process didn't go well sometimes. Because of because of our brokenness, we have been trying to find something that is complete. Because of our insecurity, we are looking for a presence who can give us complete love and sense of belonging. Though some go astray in their search, because they didn't find God, they created one and multiple gods to bless them. See. We've been searching God. We've been looking for Him, and we can also see that in the Book of Psalms. Do you remember King David's prayer? In Psalm twenty-three, it says, "I am sure that Your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever." In Psalm twenty-seven says, "I'm asking the Lord for only one thing. Here's what I want. I want to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I want to look at the beauty of the Lord. I want to worship Him in His temple. In this way, with a longing heart." We come before God with our prayers. I cried out sometimes to God, "Lord, I'm in pain. I'm in pain. Could you heal me, please?" Could you? Solve my problems, like moving away the mountain from me. Could you make things easier? And I prayed, in the name of Jesus. I said, "Amen," and I opened my eyes. I was still in pain. My problem was still there, unsolved. It seems like nothing was getting better. I questioned God, Lord, didn't you say if you believe, you will receive what you ask for when you pray? I believed you didn't answer. The Lord said, "I will be with you. I will be with you." You know, sometimes it doesn't sound comforting when we are in pain. A sound speaking in my heart. Lord, thank you. I try to keep my manner, but I don't care whether you are with me. I want my problem be solved. I want my pain be healed. That's all I want. The Lord answered, "I am the Lord. I do not lack power. I am not aimed to harm you. I can give you wisdom. I can give you power. I can give you a good job. 
I can give you money. I can pay, heal your pain. I can give you anything, everything, anytime. But what about me? Do you want me? I was nervous and afraid while I, I was preparing this sermon. But God said, I will be with you. He didn't answer my prayer, but he replied. I'm still nervous, but I'm here. I'm here to share his heart towards you and to tell you. Just as God is with me, God is also with you. Don't you know you are the temple of God? Even though you are still in pain, even though your problem is not solved, he is with you. And he is willing to walk through it with you. You know when he says, I will be with you. It means he sees you. He hears you. He knows you. He cares about you, and he loves you. <laughs>